kit. This is the kit for for connecting the UMP to the submersible. This is what the submersible is. Very simple. You cannot tell by looking at it like this. You have to actually because they all look the same. And it's most of the times, I mean, we go through that train, but the, the UMP is the only thing that matters. You know, that can change those power and the capacitor. Uh, however, 1.5 and 0.75 are using the same capacitor, but different UMP. But 2 horsepower has a different capacitor, higher grade, and then a different UMP. For five to start, right? Basically, as another thing, confined space suffocation is a big thing in petrol stations. I'm not going to take too much time on that, but you know, when you are in, a, in an area where there's lack of air, lack of oxygen, right? The oxygen level goes below that, okay? You might still survive, but you will start to feel dizzy. But if oxygen levels go far, far, far low, you, are, you, are, you cannot survive for more than a few, like less than a minute, and you will just lose consciousness. Once you lose accident, when you are as, as a technician in the station, always watch out for vehicles, try and always mark your areas to make sure that you know you are walking, there's no possibility that you are not looking, you want to turn like this and the crash will not jump you. Mm -hmm. So let's let's uh, move on. Um, there's a triangle of, of fire, right? For fire to happen, you need fuel, oxygen and heat. Fuel doesn't mean necessarily petrol or diesel, it means something that is going to fuel the fire. Okay? So if I want to light a matchstick in a place that there is zero oxygen, that matchstick will never light. Mm -hmm. It needs oxygen. Mm -hmm. yes. Heat. Heat is the fact that I am doing that, okay? That, that is causing the heat. Okay? I'm, 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 I'm doing that. It's causing heat. Then of course, the fuel is that brown thing on the matches. That is, is the fuel, okay? Now, if I take this same analogy to our own business, which is petrol station, the fuel is the diesel and the petrol and the whatever, right? The oxygen is in abundance. The air and the heat is anything that can come in and cause like the static and all those things. There are all sorts of heat. When you are in the petrol station, remember that you are always just one step away from fire, which means any form of heat that is comes in to the equation. These two are already there. This is a triangle, which means you need this three. Just bring this one in, fire will start. So we are one step of fire. So we will go straight into pumps and dispensers now. Who knows here the difference between a pump and a dispenser in our own technical language? Pump, the difference is pump is a machine that can suck oil from underground tank to pump in, which is dispenser is a pump, is a machine that can push. So a, a pump, you know, we have when you go to a, a, a station, you have two, two ways of operating in terms of your pumping. You can either suction from the from the tank or you can use a submersible to push the product. When you are pushing, I can talk about the electrical connections of these uh, dispensers or pumps. Okay. All electrical cables connected to uh, to pumps should be armor cables. And it has a very huge uh, uh, way of taking you know, taking the earth also and all starting from the from the tank, you know, all the all the strength is coming from the, the armor itself. Thing. We are we are also suggesting that you will have a separate cable for your electronics and a separate cable for your, your, yeah, for your electric motor, motor. Electric motor yeah. right? This is the suggestion. Some people take one cable and then they they move it inside. Of it. We prefer that when you are connecting in the junction box, you use uh, instead of just using bare wire, you know, we prefer that you use a, a logs or crimps, okay? Your cable should be color coded. You cannot be using yellow for for life and brown for ground or earth, right? And if you are doing a if you are doing a connection for cables in a particular station, right, and you are the person in charge of that, you should be able to stay to the same type of color code so that anywhere those cables terminate, you already know that before you even start tracing cable, you know that this means this one. This is the as a second breaker, you can put it on, put it off. If that cut has a particular problem, it will trip off, trip off its own breaker rather than having all of them on one major breaker, then one compass problem, no pump down. You know? <coughs> now, one more thing I must say is when we are connecting our cables into pumps, okay, I always advise that you use bands. Right? 
normally the gland will look like this and the thing will go in. It has, a, you, it has a thing here. When you tighten, the more you tighten this, the more it tightens the cable. And the cable goes in like this, okay? What that means is that, obviously, from this place forward, this place has held the cable tight. Because there's glands for different cables. Yeah. Two things the gland does. Number one, not only does it do that, it also ensures that fumes cannot go inside because it will cover the hole. So I've seen some people. So let's go to the next topic here, which is the frontier architecture. Okay, so the architecture of our pump, which is the same architecture of many other pumps, there might be some differences in some other architecture, but this is how they mostly work. You have what you call the CPU board. Okay, it's normally the brain box of a pump. That is where the whole uh, programming of the pump sits, and everybody has to come there to verify them. So what is everybody? I mean, all the other boards have to come there. It's the center of the whole equation, right? Our SNPS board, which is like our power board. Okay, yeah. The power board connects to the control board. The power board is the one that's the job of this guy. Goes and powers the CPU board. The CPU board now talks, is the one in our own form, talks to the keypad. The keypad connected to the keypad is now the main display and then the parallel display. Parallel display in our own case means that even if it's a single, so this is a, a single nozzle, even though you are a single nozzle. We have the same, so if you are on one side, you are selling. This side will be showing the sale, that other side will be showing the same sale. Okay? So if I don't have, have a pulsar board here, your EMT, which is your electromechanical totalizer, any automation that is going to be connected to this system is normally connected to the CPU board. Then you have your relay board, which is um, uh, uh, what controls your, your electric motor and your solenoids. You should not have your high and your low, okay? So this is the architecture. It's another double nozzle. It's exactly the same thing, but everything is in twos now.